in the previous video we looked at some features of some enzymes and there we established the fact that enzymes are specific for particular reaction and also for particular substrate because they have a site we call active site which is complementary to a particular substrate in this video we're going to look at activation energy in details mechanism of enzyme action and look at some enzyme specificities so before we progress don't forget to click on the like button the subscribe button and also share to whom you may concern when you say activation energy as we said in the previous video it is the minimum amount of energy that a reaction requires for it to progress so for a particular substrate to be converted to a product let's say hydrogen peroxide want to break it down to hydrogen gas and oxygen gas there is an amount of energy which is required to break the bonds in this hydrogen peroxide to form the hydrogen gas and the oxygen and that minimum amount of energy that is required for the breakage of the bond in the hydrogen peroxide to the hydrogen gas and the oxygen is what we call the activation energy so how then do enzymes affect a particular reaction like this in the body enzymes proceed this reaction basically by lowering the activation energy so if a large energy is used needed to break this bond to form this product enzymes tend to lower the, that activation energy which will be used to break this bond for example the activation energy of this reaction is it is a scale of a mole But when you add a catalyst, just one kilogram per mole energy is required in the presence of the enzyme. So this large energy is what is required for this, this, this reaction to proceed. But in the presence of enzymes, just this one, this energy will be required for this reaction to proceed. That means that the enzyme just tend to lower the activation energy which is the amount of energy which is needed for a breakage of the bond in the substrate to form the product. So let's look at this energy profile. This is substrate A and B undergoing bonding to form product AB. So this is an energy profile. This is the reaction and the vertical is the energy level. So how large is the energy? If you look at this energy profile, this one, this the first curve is the curve without an enzyme. So if the reaction proceeds without an enzyme, it means there's a very large energy which is going to be required. There is a very large energy which is going to be required. In other words, when you add an enzyme, this activation energy is going to be pressed to this side. So we're going to depress this to this curve so that the reaction can proceed easily so without the enzyme this is the activation energy very long very high and a very large energy but with the enzyme we are going to require a very small amount of energy for this reaction to proceed so this is the activation energy which is the energy needed to break the bond in this compound to form the product. The next thing you are going to look at here is the enzyme specificity. So enzymes are specific for particular reactions. For example, when you have a catalyst, the catalyst is a specific enzyme which is used for breaking of hydrogen peroxide to hydrogen gas and oxygen we have a protease protease is very specific for protein reaction and it is used to break down proteins into its constituent amino acids we have amylase also a specific enzyme for the breakdown of starch or amylose in starch we have lipase only for lipids that break down lipids into fatty acids and glycerides triglycerides so 
enzyme has specific particular reactions and also because they have a site which we call active site which is complementary to a particular substrate for example if you have this enzyme this enzyme is specific to this substrate because the active site of this enzyme fits this one that is when you add this one when you attach when you attach this substrate to this enzyme it is going to fit and that defines the complementarity but if you have the substrate and you add this one to this enzyme there's going to be no reaction because there's no complementarity between the active site of this enzyme and this substrate there is a define for this condition which you call the lock and key model that's what you call mechanism of enzyme action so enzymes have a site we call active site that binds with its substrate because of the degree of the complementarity to convert the substrate to the product now let's look at how enzyme reactions proceed if you have an enzyme because of the active site complementarity with the substrate it will bind and form an intermediate called enzyme substrate complex when you add an enzyme to a substrate you are going to form an intermediate and that intermediate is called an enzyme substrate complex the enzyme that then breaks down or forms the product from the complex so in the middle here realize that the enzyme get bounded to the substrate and form a one complex which you call the enzyme substrate complex because the enzyme's active site which is complementary to the substrate it will convert the substrate to the enzyme and the product and if you can recover we said that the enzymes themselves are not affected at the end of every reaction so they convert a substrate to a product but they themselves they are not affected at the end of the reaction so if you have this enzyme and this enzyme want to speed up this reaction it will bond to this substrate because of the high degree of complementarity then form this intermediate we call enzyme substrate complex the enzyme then breaks down the substrate to the corresponding product and leaving the enzymes this defines the mechanism of enzyme action enzymes just bond to a particular substrate and form a one unit compound which you call the enzyme substrate complex and break down the complex into the unit this definition is what we call the lock and key model this definition is what we call the lock and key model this model is very simple it just means that every enzyme is specific for particular substrates so if an enzyme is present and a substrate avails the enzyme is going to proceed that reaction by acting on the substrate in other words if the enzyme is present and another substrate is, is present which is not complementary to the enzyme that reaction is not going to proceed because there is no degree of complementarity between the active site of the enzyme and the substrate so if you look at here the main point of the lock and key model is that because a particular lock can open a particular key in the same way a particular enzyme can only act on particular substrate for example an enzyme that acts on glucose can only act on glucose there is no way an enzyme acting on glucose can act on let's say an amino acid no because of that degree of complementarity so the tendency of a substrate to bind strongly to a particular enzyme's active site and get converted to the product which is the mechanism of enzyme action is what is what is defined by the lock and key model so this is basically how enzymes proceed their reaction or convert a particular reactant or substrate to a product can you like and subscribe to the page as we drop more videos in the next on how enzymes undertake particular reactions 
in the human body to generate particular energy. Thank you very much for watching.